Hello, Colin here. I, I said I'd tell you a story about uh, meeting Norman Wisdom. Well, I was first aware of Norman uh, when I was a child, going to the cinema. He was a big, big cinema star. In fact, I think it was Lou Grade that said that uh, the profit from his films saved the rank studios from going bankrupt. And as a child, we go and I'd go and see his films and uh, they were wonderful timeless and if you see them on uh, TV now they've still got some funny stuff in them and uh, he was also a pop star he told me later later on in his life that he he was the one that uh, made the Beatles lose the number one spot with Love Me Do um, with, with his song Don't Laugh At Me Because I'm A Fool actually I don't believe it's true I think it was Ken Dodd that did that um, but you didn't argue with Norman or Sir Norman, as he became. Anyway, I saw him live. My dad took me to the Wimbledon Theatre and uh, his act was fabulous. And it wasn't until 30, 35 years later that I actually met him professionally. I was working for the Margate Tourist Board doing magic and close up and generally faffing around. And Sir Norman, or Norman as he was then, uh, was appearing at the Winter Gardens for the summer season as the legendary Norman Wisdom. And he wasn't having a very good time. I think the council or the councillors would give him in grief. And part of his contract uh, was to open fates and open shops and do all this sort of crap. And uh, I was at a dog show in Margate on, on the seafront. And uh, they said, Norman's going to come along and say a few words. I was going to share a stage with Sir Norman mm. Wisdom. Well, it wasn't a stage at all. It was a low loader that we were standing on with a disco and the what's it. And I thought, well, never mind. It's a great moment for me. So they gave me the nod. They said he's here. And I introduced him similarly to the way I just uh, mentioned, saying that he was a true legend. They didn't use the word superstar in these days, but that's what they would call him now. And how he saved the studios. And he was uh, off at the side listening. And uh, I introduced him, gave him the big build up and on he came. And before he went to the microphone, he came over to me and said, don't go far, son, I want to talk to you afterwards. I thought, oh, great. Anyway, he did his stuff, did a few jokes, said hello, opened the place. And on the way back, he, uh, uh, he stopped and said, look, uh, come over here, we'll have a, a, a coffee and then had a thermos of, of tea or whatever it was. And he said, uh, where, where do you live? Where do you come from? I said, well, actually, I'm in Deal, in Kent. He said, no. I said, yeah. He said, well, because he was an orphan. Um, and is in uh, in care. They didn't call it that then, or they just called it bloody orphanages. Um, but he w ended up in Deal um, with his first job, riding a bike, push bike delivery boy. And he said, I go down there quite often. He said, whereabouts in Deal are you? He said, just off the sea seafront. Um, I, couldn't, I can't remember the name of the road now that I lived in, but it, he said, well, funnily enough, I've, I've got a, a lady friend down there. I said, Norman. Oh. He said, not that sort of lady friend. He said, it's just somebody I've known for years and years, and I visit her. So next time I visit, give me your phone number and I'll give you a call. I thought, yeah, flipping birds, my pigs might fly. But uh, I, I gave him the number, and sure enough, about a month later, um, I got a phone call. I said, hello? He said, hello? I said, who's that? He said, Norman. I said, Norman who? He said, Norman Wisdom. I said, oh, flipping heck, I was, I was flabbergasted. He said, I'm coming down tomorrow. He said, I've borrowed a friend's car. I'm going to go and see my lady friend. He said, then I'll pick you up about two o'clock and we'll go for a drive and have a pub lunch. I said, great. So sure enough, the next day, coming down the road, a flipping uh, Rolls Royce Silver Cloud pulled up outside my front door. Who gets out? Norman Wisdom. I could see all the neighbours' curtains twitching. And I thought, flipping heck. He said, come on, Colin, we'll, we'll pop out. He said, I borrowed the car for me friend, so I've got to be careful with it. And he, he got in the car and, and I got in the passenger seat next to him and I realised he was sitting on a cushion because he was quite a short guy. And this is the only way he could see over the flipping steering wheel, I think. And um, his feet just reached the pedals and um, off we go. And he's crunching the gears because he couldn't reach. And I said, uh, do you want me to drive along? He said, oh, no, I couldn't let you do that. He said, I promised my friend to look after his car. Rolls Royce, Silver Cloud, crunching the gears. He said, we'll go down to St. Margaret's Bay, which was towards Dover, um, but I've got to stop for petrol. 
I said, okay, there's a petrol station just up there on the right hand side as we go along. I said, pull in there, self-service. He said, oh, no problem. So he pulls into the, the garage and he's sitting there. Um, he said, uh, I said, well, do you want me to do it? He said, no, no, you're my guest, I'll do it. He said, I've got to look after the car. And he gets out of the car. He said, where would the petrol cap be? I said, well, it's at the back. So he got the self-service thing. And of course it wouldn't reach because the petrol cap was on the other side of the car. Oh, so he got back in the car. Pulled out, three point, well it wasn't a three point turn, it was a 23 point turn. And there's other cars trying to get in, but they all realised when they looked, Rolls Royce, and they looked, they realised it was normal wisdom. So nobody was tooting their horn. And he pulls in, gets it lined up, puts the petrol in. I said, where do I pay? I said, well, in the shop, over there. And he realised that people were looking now. They uh, they, they, they clocked in, they knew who he was. And I saw a glint in his eye, and I thought, here we go. And sure enough, as he walked away over to the, uh, the, the the shop, he did the walk. You know, he struck and he got to the door and it said push. And he didn't push, he pulled. La, 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 la. Did this for a, for a minute or so. Then he went in. And I could see him talking to the petrol guy and the petrol guy laughing. So his son starts to come out. And of course, it said pull. So he pushed. Did the same joke again. And... Uh, Walked back to the car, and I thought, we're going to get massacred here. People are going to want autographs. But he jumped in the car, and off we went. And uh, we got to St. Margaret's Bay, <coughs> excuse me, and we were sitting there talking. I said, how did you invent the character? You know, the normal, uh, they called him Pitkin in all the, uh, the movies. And a Pitkin was a, 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 was a measure of liquid, a very small measure of liquid. So it, it sort of worked. He said, well, actually, it was a magician, David Nixon, who I mentioned before. Uh, it, it, they were doing a concert party. They didn't call them summer shows then. They were concert parties. And he wanted to do a comedy routine. And he said to Norman, who was also uh, part of the show, would you come up on stage and do the routine, which involved holding a block of ice that a car was going to appear in. And, of course, the ice would start to melt. Norman would drop it. That would be all the fun. Uh, he used it later in one of his films. He didn't waste material, did Norman. And he said, well, I didn't want to get me clothes wet, so I went to a, a pawn shop, a second-hand store in those days, you know, with the three balls hanging outside, and I bought a suit that was too small and a cap that I wore sideways. And that was how the character was invented. I said, uh, well, you've still got it, judging from back in the uh, service station. Um, are you going to continue touring? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, well, my straight man, Jerry Desmond, who also appeared in the films with him, a um, very military and upright guy, he said, he's decided to retire. I said, yeah, but you can train somebody else, surely. And Norman said, no. He said, uh, I've worked with Desmond for 30 years, for Jerry for 30 years, and I can't be asked." He said, I've made enough money, I'm retiring. I said, fully retiring? He said, I think so. But of course, sure enough, watch the telly, last of the summer wine, on he comes, a lot older, still just as funny. Norman Wisdom, if he's in heaven, he'll be making God laugh. A great day, a great day out with a great guy. I salute Sir Norman Wisdom. Thanks for watching. See you soon.